If you never came across a tutorial for Unity Occlusion Cooling, let me ask you. Do you see something wrong in this scene? Any guess what the problem might be? This problem, by the way, will happen by default in every single game that you make. Let's see what's going on and what we can do about it. So in this video you can see two parts, right? The left and the right side. On the left side you see the game view, which is what the player is seeing. And on the right side you see the scene view, and in this case it is showing what Unity is actually rendering. If you compare what the player sees on the left with what the Unity engine is rendering on the right side, you will notice that Unity is rendering many more elements than what we actually need, or what the player says, right? And this leads to wasting resources in CPU and GPU. You don't want this, right? Because otherwise that means that you're going to ship a game with worse visuals than what your game could actually achieve. So in order to cope with the problem of rendering more than what we need, Unity has two techniques. Both are related to cooling. Cooling means to remove from a flock. In this case, in the case of rendering, we're talking about removing elements from the render pipeline. Elements that do not affect the final image. For example, if we're having a look at this door, anything that is after this door shouldn't be rendered, right? Because it has no impact on the final image. After all, this door is closed and it's totally opaque. So cooling in this case will be to remove these plants from the render pipeline, because in this case, they do not affect the final image that you see on the right, right? On the game view. Unity has two types of cooling. One is frustrum cooling and the other one is occlusion cooling. Let's see the difference. So if I select my camera, you will notice that the camera has some kind of a cone. This is called the frustrum. This is in theory what the player can see, this cone of view. And this is directly affected by the field of view that you set on the camera component. The wider it is, the more you see. So Unity by default will try to remove all the objects that lie outside of this field of view. Let's see it through the visualization mode. As you can see, the camera is not rendering anymore the elements that lie outside of this cone. There are some exceptions like these ones, just because they have a huge render bounding boxes. In general, you will see that as you move and rotate the camera around, you stop rendering certain elements that are outside of this field of view. However, the problem persists that some of these objects are still visible, even though they are being hidden or occluded by other objects. In this case, this door should be hiding these elements, these plants, right? But it isn't. So this is where the second technique comes into play, and it's called occlusion calling. This is all about making objects hide other objects. For this, we have two words. The first one is an occluder, which is an object that is hiding other objects. For example, this door could be considered an occluder, right? Because it should be hiding other objects. And then we have the occludees, which are the elements that we want to stop rendering just because they are being hidden by other objects. In this case, for example, this plant could be an occludee. These roles that we assign to objects are set in the static flags of the inspector. In this case, we want this plant to be an occludee, so we go to the static flags and set occludee static. In the case of walls and other objects that can hide other objects, we go to the static flag that says occluder static. So the first step to get occlusion calling working in your game is to set the correct static flags, occluder static and occludee static depending on their function. And of course one object can be an occluder and an occludee at the same time. For example, if I look at this door from behind these rocks, this door is an occluder but also being occluded, therefore an occludee. So that's the first step to set the right static flags for your objects. So let's get into the details of occlusion calling in a simpler scene. And here we're going to create a wall and this is going to be our occluder. Therefore, we're going to the static flags and going to set the occluder static flag. We're going to try to hide a vegetation of the scene, right? For example, I can look for a prefab and then look for a vegetation large one. And for this matter, we want to set the static flag to occlude static because we want to stop rendering it once we are in front of an occluder, right? So let's make this cube just a bit bigger. Now, if I set my camera to look at this wall, in theory, we shouldn't be able to see this plant, right? But right now we are rendering it because it lies within the frustrum view. 
therefore Fraston Colony is not going to help us. Let's get Occlusion Colony to work. For this we go to Window, Rendering and Occlusion Colony. This will open the panel that you see on the bottom right called Occlusion. So the first step was to set the static flags. The second step is going to bake the Occlusion Colony. We do this by going to the Bake tab and then hitting the Bake button. To visualize the results we go to Visualization mode and you see that we are still rendering the plant even though we cannot really see this. The reason for this is that we need to define something called occlusion area, which is the area in which the occlusion colony will happen. This is not always mandatory, but as you can see, very often it will fail if you don't do so. So for this to work, you add a component called occlusion area, and then you set the bounding boxes correctly. In this case, I'm going to set it to 100, 20, and 100. So as you can see, this covers the entire scene that I care about. Now that we are within an occlusion area, we're going to bake this again. And effectively, this plant is not visible anymore because it is being occluded by this wall. If we move the camera around, you will see that at some point we will see the plant again, right? If, for example, if I go through the wall itself, like here you have it. Now, occlusion colony has many more elements to this than what I just showed you, right? For example, we have things called occlusion portals. We also have baking parameters of occlusion colony. All of this is something that I detail in my blog post. So if you are interested in occlusion colony, and I think you should, then have a look at the blog post that I link in the description. All right, I hope this short video was useful to you. Have a look at my blog post and see you next time. Bye bye.